Hey everyone, this is Mike and yesterday me and some friends from my raid group decided to go into heaven on high to try and clear all the way up to floor 100. What you're going to be seeing in the background is us clearing the last 10 floors. Of course, I don't know how long this video is going to be, so I'm just going to cut it short and I'll just show you some of the stuff there. Um, but basically, it was a lot of fun and it kind of made me want to talk about the deep dungeon in general since we don't know anything about a third deep dungeon yet. And if so, if it's going to be there where I think it might be. So if you don't know what a deep dungeon is, we currently have two of them in the game. We have Heaven on High, which is for Stormblood, and we had Palace of the Dead, which was for Heavensward, which you can find in the Ruby Sea and in the South Shroud, respectively. Um, and the way it works is very simple. So you go in with a random party. You can go, of course, with some friends in like a pre-made party. You can go solo or you can go into a duty finder party, I guess you could call it. And your restrictions don't matter, you don't have no normal party restrictions. You can go in with 4 DPS, a tank, 3 DPS, 3 healers and a DPS, and a, or like 2 healers, a DPS, a tank. Doesn't matter at all, you can queue in with whatever you want to play. Now, when you go in, you first find yourself in some randomly generated rooms, feeling kind of like a roguelike, I guess you could call it. And all of these rooms contain enemies, there's also some treasure chests that you can find, uh, depending on the chest, you're also going to get different stuff. For example, a brown chest gives you items, a silver chest will give you magicites or uh, levels up your aether pool gear. The magicites is only for heaven on high. The aether pool gear is the gear that will make you stronger inside the deep dungeon itself. So you don't need to have great gear when it comes to... Well, let me mute my discourse real quick. You don't need to have great gear when it comes to like having outside of the dungeon so for example you can queue in with some level one glamour i guess you could call it and still be as strong in the deep dungeon as your aether pool is because the aether pool gear is the only thing that matters and that is also leveled through those silver chests and then of course the golden chests will give you commanders these commanders are one-time use items and they'll depending on which commander it is will grant you a specific effect like for example commander of strength will just make you stronger and do more damage Commander of Steel makes you take less damage. But there's also a couple of other cool ones that work well together. For example, on some of the floors, the way that we cleared them out was by using a Commander of Concealment, which makes you invisible, and then a Commander of Petrification, which makes it so that the monsters get basically frozen and then they are one-shottable. So what you do is, you use the Concealment, everybody spreads out across the floor. Once everyone is in position, we use the Commander of Petrification, all the monsters get petrified, and then we just one-shot them all and clear out the floor like that relatively quickly. And there's of course a bunch of other ones as well. Now, after you do this, like after you go into the floor, once you've beaten a set amount of enemies, the portal to the next floor will open up, so everybody gathers around the portal, and they get transferred onto floor number two. Do this nine times, so you clear nine normal floors, and then the tenth floor will be a mini boss. And then once you clear that one, you have finished your set of floors and then you can choose to either reset or keep going further down into the Palace of the Dead or further up into Heaven on High until you reach that highest floor of which is 100 for Heaven on High and which is 200 for Palace of the Dead. And it's really fun. So because of course you can play whatever you want, your gear doesn't matter and then the commanders also influence your gameplay quite a bit as well, which is what makes it so much fun. Now, when you when we look back at the previous uh, Deep Dungeons, we know that they always came out at a 0.3 patch, if I'm not mistaken. I think Palace of the Dead came out at 3.3 and then Heaven on High in 4.3. And then, of course, we're going to have 5.2 come out relatively shortly, meaning that in about three months' time, we're going to be getting that 5.3 patch where we can expect an ultimate and some other piece of content as well. Because ultimate is probably kind of going to be like the big piece of content when it comes down to the raiders. But for the other people in 5.3, we're most likely going to be seeing some other piece of content as well, out next to a dungeon, of course. So, for me, I'm thinking it's going to be the next deep dungeon. Now, they haven't said anything about it just yet. Of course, when we went into Stormblood, what the next deep dungeon was going to be and whether or not it was going to be, that was quite obvious. They said they, f they thought that Palace of the Dead was a really successful piece of content, so they wanted to make another one. And then as soon as you set foot into the Ruby Sea and you see this gigantic spire of like different rooms stacked on top of each other, you can kind of guess, yeah, that's probably going to be our next deep dungeon. It also has a nice contrast, like Palace of the Dead went down into hell, heaven on high goes up into heaven. So it was kind of cool, um, like lore-wise as well. 
but when we go into Shadow Ringers, they actually haven't said anything yet about wanting to do a Thirst Deep dungeon. I personally think they will do it because of the success that both Palace of the Dead as well as Heaven on High has brought. Seeing also how they are changing the Beast Tribe into a more crafting and gathering focus, like for example the second Beast Tribe we're getting in Shadowbringers is going to be for gatherers only, meaning that there's going to be like quote unquote less ways to level your combat classes outside of of course roulettes and stuff like that. And of course since the deep dungeons have always been the premier way to level your combat classes as well because it's just really quickly to clear out the 10 floors that you can kind of farm which was floor 50 to 60 in Palace of the Dead and then 20 to 30 in Heaven on High. It just goes really fast and gives a really good amount of experience. So since that is kind of like the best way to level your alt jobs, I'm kind of expecting to see that they might, since they are already like deviating away from beast tribes that are working for your battle classes towards more of a crafting and gathering focus to maybe implement the next deep dungeon, which is then going to be the main way that you can level up those alt jobs as well, if you have not already, because of course I already have everything at max level, but for the people that don't, it would probably be a really good way to level those alts again as well. So that's why I kind of think it is going to be there, because both of the previous deep dungeons have been a pretty good success. They've always been really fun as well with all of the special items that you can only get in there, like some of the mounts, some of the accessories. For example, the hairstyle that I'm using comes from Heaven on High as well, which I think is a really cool thing because it kind of encourages people to attempt this more difficult content as well. Um, of course, I'm not saying that it's super difficult, but when it comes down to being able to solo it, it is one of the biggest challenges in the game so far. I think there's only been a handful of people that actually managed to solo Palace of the Dead. So, and that's content that's been out for like two years at this point, if not longer. So I think that's really cool stuff that is there for people that really want that challenge of that solo challenge, because most of the content in this game, or at least the challenging content, is all eight-man content. And now we actually have some challenging four-man content, as well as being able to solo it. Uh, is really cool as well for the people that want that challenge, of course. And then having all of the cool glamour stuff, like the mounts, like the hairstyle, and all of that kind of stuff attached to it as well, is something I think is really good. First, for example, in yesterday's run, I got four Sephiroth weapons, like the crafted versions of the Sephiroth weapons with the cool glow, which I can now sell and hopefully make some good money out of as well, because they go for about 200k on my server. So it's really fun to not only do, but also to get some glamour out of it, maybe make some money as well along the way, and just a really cool experience and I think that going into Shadowbringers they could make one as well when it comes to where they would make one of course we don't know I would speculate that it's probably going to be in the Crystal Tower now you might be like well the Crystal Tower already has two things attached to it right we had the Crystal Tower raid the 24 man raids back in A Realm Reborn and then now in Shadowbringers we have the twinning dungeon which takes place underneath the 24 man raid so I'm kind of thinking that um, they're gonna do something more with that because when we go into the twinning you can see that there's all these machinations we of course have Alexander which is called the tycoon I believe but it's basically Alexander you can kind of see some stuff uh, pictures in the arena as well of the tycoon so I'm kind of thinking that if there is going to be a next deep dungeon it is most likely going to be somewhere in the twinning and we maybe go down into the crystal tower to kind of see all of the different machinations that are hiding underneath there because I think that would kind of be the most likely thing. I think some of my friends have speculated that it could be an Amaroth, which could be really cool, but on the other hand, Amaroth kind of already has three dungeons. We of course have the Amaroth dungeon from the main story, then we have the Academia Anider, I believe that's how you pronounce it, so that's the second dungeon, and then now in patch 5.2, which is coming out in about a week's time, we're going to get a third dungeon that also takes place in Amaroth. So, don't really think that Amaroth is going to be the place, because otherwise we're going to have so much different instance content inside Amaroth. Although I do would like to say that it would be really cool. And on the other hand, the Crystal Tower is in a sanctuary, like a, a big town, I guess you could call it. So, and the other deep dungeons have always been out in the world, in like a normal outside map, not in a town and stuff like that. So, on the other hand, I wouldn't really mind it because the Crystarium is a really cool place and I kind of am sad that Yulmor is our endgame town and not the Crystarium because the Crystarium looks so much cooler. 
Um, so it would be kind of cool to see people come back to the Crystarium to go and do that deep dungeon and stuff like that. But that's pretty much going to be it for me. That's kind of what I think about what the next deep dungeon could be, why I like the deep dungeon as well, and why I definitely recommend people to go do it as well. If you haven't done Pedals of the Dead or Heaven on High yet, definitely go check it out because it's a really cool piece of content and pretty challenging for four people as well. Or if you, of course, want to take the challenge of soloing it yourself. But... That's all I wanted to say. I hope you enjoyed it. If you, of course, have a different opinion of where the next Deep Dungeon could be, definitely let me know, because I am all open to speculations, of course. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. I'll see you in the next one.